Hello there, I'm artist Aaron Rutten, and welcome to another episode of my Digital Artist Vlog. In this episode, I'm going to play around with Krita and let you know what I think of it, because uh, quite a few people have asked me to test this out and do a review of it, so I'm gonna do that now. Krita is a free program that you can get to do digital painting. I think it's getting better and better each time I try it. This is about the third time that I've tried it, I'm using version 2.9.4. And after using something like Corel Painter, it's really hard to get into Krita because it's really kind of catching up to Painter in a lot of ways. But in some other ways, it has some things that Painter doesn't have. So let's take a look at mainly those things. And I'll kind of show you some of the pros and cons. So I'm gonna to go to File New and create a new canvas. Now we can choose pixels, inches, all that stuff. The good thing is if I change any of these values, like the resolution, if I wanna put this at 150, it doesn't automatically change the width and height like it does sometimes in Painter. So it's nice to be able to set those and not have any hassles there. One thing that was confusing, I don't have any idea why there's so many RGB color profiles. Um, I see some kind of references to Adobe RGB, but there's several. So honestly, I don't even know what to pick here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just pick the first one and hope that that's what I want. I do wish that there were fewer options there. You can pick the number of layers that you want to start out with. That's kind of cool. Let's just go ahead and pick two. I'll go to create. So we have a new canvas. We have the color picker that's pretty identical to Corel Painter's color picker, which I like. I like the hue ring on the outside and I like the saturation and value triangle in the middle. However, it's a little weird that it's turned differently than it is in Corel Painter. I kind of liked having the saturation on one side and the value on the other, but that's okay. I can live with this. So. You can pick colors. Now, I'm not an expert on this. I've really only tinkered with this a little bit, so I'm not, you know, by any means making this like a how-to tutorial. This is really me knowing probably just about as much as you do about the program and just kind of trying it out. There are a lot of different brush engines, which kind of do a pretty good job of covering everything. There's some interesting stuff that I haven't seen in other programs, like the hatching, that's pretty cool. Um, there's particle brushes like in Corel Painter 2015, although I don't think they're quite as good. There's a Dyna brush and a bunch of other stuff. There's also a whole bunch of brush presets here if you just want kind of basic brushes. Let's pick something like this freeform ink brush here and let's see how this works with my Wacom stylus. Now I think I accidentally clicked on that Dyna thing, so I'm gonna have to set this back to pixel. Maybe it'll work like it's supposed to now. Yeah, so you can see the pen pressure works really well. Brushes are pretty fast, pretty smooth. And so you could do some pretty cool digital painting with this program. I'm using a Wacom Cintiq 24, so I can draw on my screen, a little cartoon or something here. Let's take a look at some of the other brushes. There's these sponges, which I really like because the sponge kind of rotates while you paint with it. So you get some pretty cool organic results here. I have to say I like this texture effect a lot. Let's go ahead and take a look at the blending here. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this background with black, and then we'll jump over to the blenders. So you can kind of blend color. I haven't tried out all the blenders here, but there isn't really anything I've seen that's that impressive. Just kind of what you would expect from most digital painting programs. I haven't tried absolutely everything in this program because honestly, there's no reason to. I'm really happy with Corel Painter and I like the way that it works and I don't really need to use Krita, but I could see some other people could prefer using it, especially because it's free. But free isn't always necessarily a good thing because sometimes you get what you pay for. And in this case, you know, you're not paying for anything. So you're not necessarily getting the best digital painting experience. But the one thing that I do like the most about this is if you hit W, you enter this mode where you can draw and it's gonna create a seamless pattern. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that I can create this pretty cool seamless pattern. Maybe it's a person's face. And it connects to itself. I don't know, you can do some pretty cool stuff. So I like this feature a lot. You can make seamless patterns in other programs like Photoshop and Corel Painter, but being able to zoom in and out on the fly, go in close, add some details, then zoom back out and look and see how it looks, that's just really cool. 
So out of all the things that I've discovered in Krita, this one I like a lot and I'll actually be using it quite a bit when I create seamless patterns because this is really fun to me. Another thing that's kind of cool are the perspective guide tools. You can draw out a perspective guide like so. So you make a plane and you can drag walls off of that plane if you want to build complex scenes in three dimensions. So kind of straighten this out and I can make kind of like a ledge, something like that. Stairs even. So that's kind of cool. There's of course some shape tools, which are pretty decent. You can constrain the proportion, you can constrain and scale from the center. So that's always really helpful. So I'm not gonna go through every feature. I just kind of wanted to demo this a little bit and let you know what I think. I think it is a pretty cool, promising digital painting program. I think that it's free and that's a good thing, but it's also kind of a bad thing because this is really lacking in a lot of areas where a professional might not be too comfortable working with this. So I'm not definitely not gonna leave Corel Painter for this, but I might use it for that cool pattern mode because I think that's really neat. If you enjoyed this episode of my digital artist vlog, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. And if you appreciate all these videos I'm making, go on over to patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten and donate to help me continue making videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.